Friday, our tale of the day for this lightweight matchup brought to you by Zenergy, the great tasting ultra premium energy drink. Born in Brazil, Gurgel, five years the elder of the American, Alvin Robinson. Everything else is virtually identical. Once again with our official introductions, Bruce Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, this fight is three rounds in the UFC lightweight division. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, a Gracie Jiu-Jitsu fighter holding a professional record of nine wins with two losses. Standing five feet eight inches tall, weighing in at 155 and one half pounds, fighting out of Denver, Colorado, Alvin King Robinson! And now, introducing his opponent, fighting out of the red corner, a mixed martial artist holding a professional record of 14 wins with two losses. He stands 5 feet 9 inches tall, weighing in at 155 pounds, fighting out of Cincinnati, Ohio, George J.G. And when the action begins, our referee in charge of the octagon is Mark Matheny. Mark Matheny, our referee. Oh, there he is. Antonio Minotauro Noguera. He'll be watching the heavyweight showcase very closely later tonight. You George Gurgel. You ready? Let's fight. Alvin Robinson. Let's see what Gurgel does as far as a game plan. He got his jaw broken by Diego Saraiva. Immediately they trade. George Gurgel on top. Now George doesn't Big mind scramble. utilizing his Brazilian jiu-jitsu skills. Alvin Robinson has some jiu-jitsu skills of his own. Absolutely. Third degree brown belt, as we mentioned, out of one of Hoist Gracie's academies. But he is a very well-decorated Brazilian jiu-jitsu black belt, is George Gurgel. That truly is his foundation. That's what it he is. teaches. But it's so crazy that we've seen so much of him standing up in the yep. UFC. His fight with Mark Hominick was almost entirely stand up. His fight with Diego Saraiva. And his fight with Danny Abadie. You know, the crazy thing about it is what you said, though, the fact that this young man who has two degrees in English, this young man likes to please the crowd. And he's such a determined fighter. Such a driven guy, and sometimes that drive can it trip you up. You know, he just wants to please the crowd so bad. And he really was disappointed with his showing on The Ultimate Fighter 2, but he was really banged up. He's been through a lot. In fact, I met his doctor the other day. I said, you probably only need one patient, and that's George Gurgel lately. Between busted jaws and reconstructed knees. Yeah, he's uh, certainly been injured many, many times. But he says he's better than he's ever been. He feels healthy, feels confident. Get up, get up, get up. And again, he had the training camp with Franklin. Big scramble as he tries to pass. And he does. Very nice by George Gurgel. This is what we're talking about. Yeah, this, this is, is where, where George's yeah. real skills lie. No question. This is where he can be the dominant fighter that he so dearly desires to be. And he's got Alvin here in side control. And with all the students here, they'll understand this game. He's got a lot of friends and his students here. Don't forget UFC Wired, UFC's newest hit show. Check UFC.com for listings. Joe Rogan, UFC Wired, kind of cool. Great highlights, some great fights. We pick the best ones and throw it on TV for everybody to see. And George Gurgel right now in great control, good positioning. He's got north-south control. Just showing dominant positioning here over Alvin Robinson. And it's not as if his striking skills are non-existent. He can throw, he's got the guts to stand toe-to-toe, -to -toe, but this is where he can really control and impose his will on an opponent, and he's doing it so far here in round one on Alvin Robinson. And he's doing it very patiently. He's not trying yes. to jump to mount, get caught in half guard again. He's controlling him in that position. And right when I said that, Alvin Robinson tries to scramble and sweep. And, and back in half, in half guard. Yeah, and, and that's the promise that at least Gurgel is trying to keep. He's trying to take it methodically like the great jiu-jitsu artists are able to do. Wait for the opportunity. Good job by Alvin Robinson in getting the full guard. Alvin Robinson moving his hips around. Trying to, was looking for an arm, but it's, you know, very difficult oh, to catch side a guy control. Like George Gurgel. And that winds him up. 
inside control. And Albinson scrambling, but every time George maintains control, showing that those black belt Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu skills. Ten years in Cincinnati, this well-educated young man who used to be an English teacher in Brazil before he moved Work here. Me, guys. Come on. As part of a U.S. exchange program in Chicago at age 17. Dad is a chemical engineer. His mom has two degrees, so very fortunate man coming from Brazil. Alvin Robinson using that little break to try to pull guard again, and George lets him get to guard, but immediately passes. It's in the transition of the mount that he keeps losing this, the dominant position, and gets stuck in half guard again. And Alvin using the cage, pushing off of it to try to get to a better spot, but George is having none of it. Complete control by George, and now full mount. And keep in One mind, we talked stuck. about, pardon me, Joe, we talked about Matt Hume coming in to help prepare Gershel and Franklin for the big fights here tonight. Alvin keeps moving, but every, every, every time George gets to a good position, he tries to mount. Alvin moves, try to get him to half guard, but George immediately puts him back to side control. Complete dominance on the ground right now by George. He's got to watch the up kick. Final 15 seconds of the round. Good pace. Good shot. Alvin throwing those legs up. Oh, Gurgel. Beautiful mount. Mounts at the That's end of the round. Some serious jujitsu right there. That was nice. That's the George Gurgel we've been waiting to see. Absolutely. Let's take a look at some of that action again here. Here's the end. You see Alvin's doing everything he can to try to move around, throwing his legs up, and George just, just not having any of it. Complete control on the ground. And now watch as he passes here. He passes side control, boom, right to mount. That's, that's just high level Brazilian jiu-jitsu technique right there. Matt Hume right there. in the corner. When you're on the side position like that, Start pressure, turning his head one way or the other so you can expose one shoulder, okay? You're letting him lay flat. You gotta turn his head, get his shoulder up so you can hit the arm bar, or so you can get your camera, so you can switch sides, so you can start working. Don't sit so long on him. That was good, you tired him out. Okay, now you gotta finish him. And you hear by that so instruction, Matt Hume down. is one of the best strategists in, in the game. The one wizard. of the best, yes, they call him the wizard. One of the best jujitsu instructors, submission instructors, very strategic in the game plans that he employs for his fighters. Gurgel out quickly. Looking for more of the same in round number two. Alvin Robinson looking to trade. Knee by Alvin Robinson. Exchange of punches. Alvin Robinson. Alvin with the takedown. Yep. George on his back. Alvin Robinson coming George out. George rolling over to that arm bar. Oh! Turns it into an Alba Plata. If he can control the body, Alvin's on top. Very nice by Alvin Robinson. Good, Good battle here. You talked about the jiu-jitsu skills possessed by both of these men. Great Alvin scramble Robinson for position here. Turning to the back, he's got the over-under. What he wants to do is he wants to throw that right leg over. He's, he's got over-under control here. If he wants to take the back, he's got to get his right leg over George Gurgel's body. And in this scramble, he may be able to do it. it looks like he's going for a Kimura, though. So he's trying to roll to a Kimura. Man, it, it would take everything in the world for Gurgel to tap yeah, it's here in be, Cincinnati. He might get his arm broke before yeah, he taps. absolutely what I was thinking. But also, he might use this position to wind up on top. And he does. And, he does. and this Cincinnati crowd reacts. Now, it should be noted, Franklin not in his corner is Rich prepares back in the locker room area for our main event of the evening, the middleweight title fight against Anderson Silva. Man, how much is this crowd going to scream when Rich Franklin walks in? It room? will be ridiculous. If the weigh-ins yesterday are any indication, and the way this city is taken to the UFC the same way as the capital city of Ohio, Columbus, did. Great fans here in the Midwest. Such enthusiastic fans. Man. Huge round of applause for the fighters at the weigh-ins. Except for Tim Sylvia. Yeah, and Anderson Silva. Tim, Tim Sylvia looked at me and goes, I can't get no love. I know. 
He's, I'm only from Iowa now, and I'm from Maine. Looking for love, looking for validation well, at UFC 78. Log on to 78.ufc.com. Joe and I will be at the brand new Prudential Center next month. Get your tickets now. Michael Bisbing, Rashad Evans, Tiago Silva, Houston, Alexander. Amongst the fighters on the card that night. Alvin Robinson throwing some legs up, looking for something. Look, turns out Oma Plata again. He's got very good Oma Platas, and he's using it to reverse the position. Very nice. Alvin Robinson on top now. Alvin Robinson has really turned the tide here in round number two. Joe, uh, why? Well, first of all, he, he caught that, that. He's got a very good Oma Plata, and he caught that Oma Plata and used it to sweep. I'm, I'm surprised George Gojo got caught up in that. He might just have underestimated Alvin's technique. He's looking for that arm bar again. George is looking to isolate the right arm of Alvin. Too much space. He's trying to look to isolate, get his legs over, and isolate the right arm of Alvin Robinson and sweep him over onto his back. What we like to call the spider web position. Joe, this battle taking place right up the U.S. Army logo there. I want to give a shout out to the guys of the Noble Eagle, the world's most elite fighting force watching on the Armed Forces Network. A special thanks to all the men and women fighting every day for our freedom. Good hammer fist by Robinson. Grigel st still seeming to concentrate on trying to isolate that right arm. Keeps looking to grab it. See, he keeps trying to hold it down with his left arm. But in the process, he's eating some shots. Well, it basically is a total reversal of what we saw in round number one, where it seemed Gurgel could not be hurt. And, you know, as, as these shots are landing, every one of these shots, and these are big oh, shots. these are big Alvin shots, Robinson. and for a man who's just recovered from a broken jaw. Yeah, and he, every one of these is going to take a little bit of endurance from him, a little bit of, uh, a little bit of uh, awareness. He's going to get dazed by you. These are, you know, these are not punches that are putting him out, but they're punches that are hurting him. Yep, and they're bloodying him up as well. And that blood's going to roll down into his eyes. Carlson Gracie had a very great quote. It was, you take a black belt, you punch him once in the face, he's a brown belt. You punch him in the face twice, he's a purple <laughs> belt. And that's absolutely the truth. And we're seeing this right now with George Gurgel. His nose is bleeding, his eyes are closing up, he's wincing in pain, and he keeps taking punch and punch, punch after hammer fist. 30 seconds remains in the round. George, George Grissel is so determined, but in this determination, see again, he's trying to secure that right arm bar. In his determination, he's not protecting himself. Now, he may get himself out of this round, though. There's only 10 seconds remaining Alvin's now. Alvin's almost passed. Seconds. Alvin's passing here. Eight seconds. George is taking some beatings here. Five seconds. He's got his back. He's mounting up. George is taking a beating. And how crazy is that, wow. though, Joe? Right at the end of round one, Gurgel got the full mount. Right at the end of round two, Robinson did, and then eventually got his back. And Gurgel was headed to the wrong Gurgel's corner. Gurgel's face is a mess, and he looks very wobbly on his Deep feet. Deep and relax. We talk about George Gurgel's heart. We talk about his determination, and that, that kind of heart and determination sometimes is a fighter's worst enemy. Sometimes it can get you in trouble, because as he's so determined to, to grab that arm, he wasn't protecting himself. He wasn't giving enough respect to the ground and pound of Alvin Robinson. And here it goes. Alvin Robinson pounding away, pounding away. George Gurgel here should be securing Alvin Robinson's body and trying to clinch him and pull him close to him and, and, and controlling his posture. And at the end of the round, Alvin Robinson was taking over. He gets side control, he gets the mount, he's dropping bombs, he gets the spiderweb position, he's landing hammer fist after hammer fist, and he eventually ended the bout on George Gurgel's back. Very confidence building for Alvin Robinson and devastating for George Gurgel. Right now, I mean, he's, I mean, he's such a proud guy, he's so determined, you see that look in his eyes, he wants a win for his fans, he wants a win for his students. His students are here, he does not want to live with a loss anywhere, but especially here in Cincinnati. He's taken he's down back again. with relative ease early by Alvin Kid Robinson, the 25-year-old fighting out of Denver. And again, not controlling Alvin Robinson's posture. Alvin Robinson, those right hands are free. Always, he's trying to just block them. That's it's, it's such a difficult thing to do when a guy's got some space. You don't know where the punches are coming. He's hammer fist and he's throwing punches. The best strategy in this position that you see for the most effective fighters are they control the guy's body. They control, they grab the back of the head, they keep him tight, they keep him from, from raining down, they keep him from posturing up and getting that space to come down with shots. 
Just like the end of the second, the beginning of the third. George rolls, but look how much space is there. There's no way he's going to get that arm. The elbow is already outside the crotch. Right in front of his corner. Gurgel absolutely owned round one. Round two, though, he took so many shots. You got to know where his head's at right now going into round three. And that's what I was thinking, Joe. Like, I can't believe this one's getting away from me here. And that's where the pressure actually starts to build. That's where being at home can actually work against you. And he keeps taking these shots. He's got to advance from this position somewhere, somehow. And again, folks, there's a lot of great fights on the undercard. If you go to UFC.com, you can check out the unaired preliminary bouts shortly after tonight's event, plus some post-fight interviews. UFC.com, great website. All sorts of great fights from past events also to download and watch. A little UFC video on demand, and don't forget, 78.UFC.com for all the information on next month's stop at the Prudential Center in Newark, New Jersey. George Gurgel breathing very heavily, his mouth's open and bloody. Blood streaming all over his face, and Alvin Robinson continues to land these punches and hammer fists from the guard. George Gurgel is dazed here. If Alvin can get out of this position and get back to where he was, if I was in his corner right now, I would be screaming for Alvin Robinson to try to pass. I mean, I know he's doing a lot of good damage here, but try to pass and get to a dominant position like he was at the end of the second round. And he's staying busy enough that Mark Matheny is not even considering at this point standing him up. Staying so busy and so active is Alvin Robinson. The crowd trying to give Gurgel any type of energy that they can. I mean, we, we've seen this happen time and time again with George. He just gets in these ruts. And especially in this fight, it's so disappointing because he started off so good. But now he's, he's just taking a beating here. George Gurgel should be forcing some sort of double underhook, some sort of body control. Trying to control Alvin Robinson's posture. At the very least, go for an underhook and use it to stand up. You know, if he, if he wants this fight to the ground, for sure he wants to be on his back. Now, if he's not working to sweep, he's got to work to stand up and try to take him down and, and wind up on top. I don't know if he's going to get to stand up again. Either guy. Alvin Robinson is going to finish this. I mean, this is just... I mean, these arm bars are so loose. Can Gurgel spin out and get up? By the time he lifts his leg up, it's, it, I mean, it, it, the arm is already passed through. The elbow's already passed the crotch. It's almost like he's just going through the motions at that point. This is going to be a very disappointing loss for George Gurgel. This is going to be devastating for George Gurgel. And Alvin Robinson is just continuing this onslaught of Hammer of, and now bad. George Gurgel, George, Gurgel. George Gurgel will tell you Alvin's there's nothing worse passed. that could have happened tonight. Alvin's got his back and he's passed. There's a minute to go. Alvin's going to try to throw his right leg over and get George Gurgel's back as soon as he feels like he's got some space. He's got that arm actually, securing that arm. Give credit to this man out of Mile High Gracie and the MMA lab in Denver, Colorado. He's doing a great job. He's doing a great job. He did a great job of forcing the action on top constantly punching, not giving George any room, and now he's secured that one arm. He's got George's left arm trapped, and he's landed some bombs here. And he he's did also it. got his right arm trapped with his right arm. And he did it, Joe, after being totally overwhelmed and dominated in, in round number round. one. Yeah, great resiliency, great determination. And uh, George Gurgel, just bloody mess, and he's taking a beating. He hears the, the, the claps for 10 seconds, and there's nothing he can do. Alvin's just on top, dropping bombs on him. This one has gotten away from George Gurgel. Wow. George Gurgel's got to be very, very disappointed right now. Especially after that great first round. I mean, he's walking away. He's very wobbly. And, and a great first round in which we, we finally were able, after all those stand-up battles, to see his jiu-jitsu skills. But give credit to Alvin yeah. Robinson. The kid yeah. learned from the loss Woo. to Kenny That's Florian. That first round. Came out tremendously in the second and third rounds to earn yeah. what we believe would be a decision victory.
It's George Gagel just allowed much too much space in the guard, allowed Alvin Robinson to rain down far too many punches and hammer fists, and kept trying. That determination was his worst enemy. Kept trying over and over again for that arm bar, but Alvin Robinson had none of it. Alvin used some great strikes from the top and very good positioning, and I think he won a decision here. He looks very fresh still, Joe. Yeah, Robinson looks great. I mean, but you know what? If you saw the end of that first round, you thought it was a wrap. It looked Absolutely. like George was pounding him. George was mounting him. He looked very strong, very confident. He got to the full mount just a little bit too late in round number one. Did Gurgel. Gurgel waits for what he probably believes is the inevitable. Bruce Buffer has gathered the judges' scorecards. The judges rendering their decision for us. Will it be Robinson or will it be Gurgel? Don't forget, still ahead, George Gurgel's teammate, best friend, training partner, Rich Franklin, fights Anderson Silva for the middleweight title. Plus the heavyweight fight forthcoming between Tim Silvia and Brandon Vera. Bruce Buffer has the official decision. Ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds, we go to the judges' scorecards for a decision. Judge Clark scores it 29-28. Doc Hamilton has it 29-27. And Jeff Mullen scores the bout 29-27, declaring the winner by unanimous decision, Alvin King. Robinson winning by unanimous decision. Here's Joe. All right, I'm here with the winner, Alvin Robinson. Alvin, great performance. It looked like at the beginning of the first round you were in some deep trouble, but you came out, you pulled it out in rounds two and three. Um, George is a warrior. He came out ready to fight. He had his hometown here with him. He had a lot of energy. He put me in some trouble. I was able to get out, and I came back to get the win. Talk, talk us through the Mickey's replay. It looked like his determination to go for the arm bar over and over again when, 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 he was, when you were on top led to you pounding him and that eventually wore him down. Yeah, I feel comfortable from there. I mean, I got guys every day in the gym going for this same, same thing, same technique. We work here a lot. I've seen tape on George and he's really good at that arm bar, so we were prepared for it. Right there, I'm just dropping, dropping bows, dropping bows on him. Were you surprised that he didn't try to clinch and control your posture more in this position? Um, I wasn't surprised. I mean, he's got a great chin. And like I said in my pre-fight interviews, George is going to continue to come forward. No matter who he's fighting, no matter what kind of trouble he's in, he's, he's here to fight. He's well, always pushing. Congratulations on your victory over a quality name opponent. Congratulations on your first victory in the UFC. We look forward to seeing you again. Alvin Robinson, ladies and gentlemen.